Governor Mary Fallon signed another criminal justice reform bill this week, one of only three which lawmakers passed during the 2017 legislative session. Meanwhile, a host of other measures which could have relieved pressure on Oklahoma's overcrowded prison system failed to get out of the House of Representatives, held up by a lawmaker who called the bills reckless and irresponsible. In addition to the budget, criminal justice reform was a focus for Governor Fallon when the legislative session began in February. Fallon urged lawmakers to address the escalating cost associated with a prison system that is bursting at the seams and had hoped to sign reform legislation before the session ended last month. Fallon says the system is not working well now and Oklahoma is paying the price. And if we don't start getting serious about criminal justice reform and, and really pushing through things that are smart on crime, uh, we're, we're going we're to spend our way to oblivion. We estimate that we may have to build another two to three prisons just to keep up with the rapid pace of people who are, are being uh, adjudicated into the prison system itself. A report by the Oklahoma Justice Reform Task Force projects that without reform, Oklahoma's prison population will grow by 7,218 inmates by the year 2026, costing the state at least $1.2 billion to build or lease three new prisons, with an additional operating cost of $700 million over 10 years. Chris Steele is chair of Oklahomans for Criminal Justice Reform and a member of the task force. The reality is our prisons today are at 109% capacity. Soon and very soon, the Department of Corrections will need to build an additional facility or facilities to house the, the number of individuals that are still in the system, currently in the system, let alone the projected increase of over 7,200. A package of 12 reforms, which would have lessened sentences for nonviolent offenders, was introduced this session, but several of the measures were held up in the House Judiciary, Criminal Justice, and Corrections Committee, chaired by Representative Scott Biggs. Biggs makes no apologies for his stance. I'm all for responsible justice reform. I've authored bills, supported bills that do just that. Uh, this irresponsible uh, lumping of all these crimes as nonviolent uh, will put the public at risk and uh, impact victims negatively, and that's why I've been opposed to it. While Oklahoma statutes define violent or 85% crimes, the former assistant district attorney says several of the so-called nonviolent crimes are anything but. And that would include stuff like uh, domestic abuse by strangulation, uh, domestic abuse with great bodily injury, uh, stalking, uh, trafficking in children, uh, soliciting sex from a minor over the computer, uh, engaging in a hate crime. I mean, they're saying hate crimes are nonviolent in this package of bills. Steele rejects that argument, saying those concerns had already been addressed. The list of crimes that he is referring to uh, have, have, are no longer part of the reforms, and they weren't after he raised his concerns. They were removed. Governor Fallon says her office tried to keep the lines of communication with Representative Biggs open to make any changes deemed necessary. I worked with him. I the chief of staff worked with him, I had two legal counsel people work with him, and my legislative policy staff worked with him extensively throughout the session. Biggs maintains that's not the way it worked. I've had zero conversations with the governor herself on these issues. Uh, you know, she held a press conference and called me out, called me out on Twitter, it's hilarious because I don't have a Twitter account, you know, held a press conference, called me out, but never picked up the phone, never walked, you walked, what, 200 steps from her office to my office. Uh, to ask about these bills. Biggs also criticized the governor for proposing reforms without a means to pay for them. Uh, what the governor asked us to do this past session and passed in one year what took Texas six years and 200 million upfront funding. Uh, she asked us to do in one year with zero funding attached to it whatsoever. Uh, these programs only succeed if we have financial support to get them in place, to get them started, to get them working. Biggs maintains he still supports justice reform and has requested an interim study to identify and distinguish violent from nonviolent crimes. I know I'm kind of on an island by myself right now when it comes to the victims and public safety. Uh, so I know there'll be difference of opinions, uh, but we're gonna let the public know, let everyone know what exactly is being defined as violent and nonviolent crimes. And that's what the study's gonna show. And that's what I anticipate some of the bills reflecting uh, next session. American Civil Liberties Union of Oklahoma Executive Director Ryan Kiesel is not optimistic that will provide any tangible results. The studies have 
been conducted. The results are in. Bipartisan groups have given us the evidence that we need to begin to act now. These interim studies are delay tactics, plain and simple. That's all they are. And Chris Steele echoes those sentiments. I've served in the legislature, and my experience has been that interim studies are usually uh, political cover and not where serious policy research is being conducted. The reality is that this issue has been studied to death. The House Speaker's office announced last week that bills which did not receive a vote will be worked on in the interim and brought back next year, calling criminal justice reform a priority for the legislature.